Um, so, AT is a membership component, which means that you can handle subscriptions through it. Um, the idea is that um, it's not so much uh, an ACI component, it's not so much a, um, um, it's not a billing component first, but it's really about memberships and what you can do with the memberships. Um, in the component itself, you have two big parts. One is the billing and the payment processing. Um, and the other part is the um, actions that you attach to the subscription itself. So, um, let me show you first. I didn't have much time to set this one up because we had a little problem with my own SQL server. So I will just um, maybe run through it very quickly. Um, if nobody has used it yet, um, the idea is that when you when a user signs up for your site, um, AEC takes over control and also puts them through a sign-up process. So. Um, Next to register them, register their data for the user account. You also um, take their payment data and so forth. So um, what you have in here are payment plans. And I prepared. This is the single thing I did prepare for this presentation. Um, so what you can do here is um, let's go to the right. Do you want that? Uh, Oh wait, I have to, I think I have to reset the screen space here. You have to resize the window. Ah, okay. Let's go. It's not just nice. Um so for each payment plan, you have a slew of main settings. So we'll just run through the most important ones. On the right side, you can set the time frame. So you have period. You have a rate for the period. I just put in ten whatever here. You can also make a light term so it doesn't um, ever run out. Um, so they never lose this one membership, and you can make it free. Mm -hmm. And there's a name, and um, later on there's also a description for the uh, for the front end and um, this stuff we might go on later. Um, I haven't set up any payment processes yet, but this is what we probably should do next. Um, yeah. So in AC you have a whole lot of payment processing services. The list right here, um, most commonly known is probably PayPal, so we'll just go with that one. We also have the pro stuff from PayPal, but this is honestly the most simple processor. Um, when you set one up, you provide your payment details, you can set a currency and um, there's some for each processor there are some extra settings. Um, each of those settings can be rewritten for each payment plan, so if you want to have multiple plans that have different currencies, for example, for different areas, then you can, can do that by overwriting it. Um, so if we look back to a server plan right now, we now have the processor right here. We can activate it, and this is the override that I was just talking about. So when you play that, oh, I don't know this. I'm running the development version, so this is not. <laughs> you can also, um, as you see here, you have the all the settings that you were just seeing in the um, in the processor settings themselves. Um, I will just copy that one so we have some kind of choice on the front end. And maybe call that the gold membership. You make it really expensive. Uh, <laughs> um, in each payment plan, you have um, certain access restrictions. This is just for seeing the payment plan in the first place. So for these, I haven't set up anything yet, but um, you can show payment plans only to people who have used a different payment plan before, only to people who haven't gotten any payment plan yet. So there's some some kind of um, some stuff that you can do with um, hierarchical setups of your payment plans and so forth. Um, right now, we don't have anything in here. Um, I'll just show you the front end real quick. 
this is the settings. Um, we can set the class first. Um, and now it should take all the registration on the front end. Let's see. Credit card, right. So normally we would at that point, I will just switch it back real quickly. Um, we would have just gone right through to the registration form. But now that we switch it over, um, could just slide that. Um, now that we do switch it over, it, um, there's a plugin for 1.5 that just takes it all over. So in that case, um, it sees that the user has not selected anything yet and just offers some payment plans. When we, I think we go for the gold right now. Um, this user just. No, no, you translate. translate. Uh, yeah. um, let's go for the phone. Uh, is it hidden there? Yeah. <laughs> First time I used the computer. Just use it. So the next step is the oh, is it expensive. Next step is the information page where you um, where you can show the um, user what you selected. There are also some um, plugins for the payment plans that extend this form, so you can, for example, ask for extra information, ask for shipping information, export tax information later on. Uh, this is one of some of the new stuff that's coming in the next version. I'll show you in a bit. Um, right now, we just say continue, and then we get a um, checkout form. Um, right now we only have one billing term. In the payment plan you can also set a trial and um, PayPal also supports that. So if you for example use PayPal subscriptions, it will um, allow you to ask for a reduced or uh, for a reduced fee or a larger fee up front. And um, with that you can um, this would show no we show it. I just, it should pick it up right now. Um, but I can show you another thing in the, in the meantime. Um, I will just add a trial right here, which should display as well. Um, say, for example, 100, and this is for one week. Um, and right now we have a user with an unfinished registration. So at that point, uh, <laughs> Michelle, at that point, um, the user account is created. But um, this user hasn't got a subscription yet. So when he logs on or tries to log on, AC will notice that. And um, I think this is this user. Let's see. Okay, let's switch. This is the activation part. I'll just switch them on in a second. Tell it to you, you can also. This is the next feature. <laughs> um, you can also tell it to um, to let everybody in. So I've got now required subscription to set to no. So you can also make um, subscriptions completely um, free to choose. So either people can, can have to have them or they, um, they have their own choice. So right now I will set it to require subscription, and we will just just copy that. Log out, log in again. And now it will tell me that I have created an account, but um, it's still pending because nothing has been paid yet. So right now I can um, either completely renew um, the whole process with cancel, or I can go to the checkout page again. And here, right now, we now see the trial billing. Um, as I said, this is also stuff that gets transmitted to PayPal subscriptions. So if you, for example, or other payment processors who support um, trials, will pick it up and um, everything else will run automatically. Um, 
Right now we will not go through the checkout, but um, I will just show you what would happen if this user would go through the checkout. So we'll just look into this one here. Um, so we have a user account for him now. This is the again the backend where you can manage your subscriptions. The test user here, and you see that he has one invoice for a million dollars. This all that one. Uh, yeah, and the other is this That's one. Okay. Um, so this user hasn't got any um, expiration or subscription attached to it yet because it hasn't paid anything yet, but we can simulate the payment with this one. And now we have an expiration date and we have a subscription date. And you can also see down there that it's marked as a trial right now because you got the gold membership. Um, in here you can also apply different memberships. You can set the expiration date and everything else. Uh, uh, you can just the round button. Oh, round button. Um, right here you have the, um, right now after we apply to membership you have the expiration subscription data added to it. Um, This is a, so this is what it takes for a normal setup. Just add paper into it, add membership plans, and everything will work from there on. Um, the next step that you probably want to do is um, attach functionality to the payment plans. This is um, what is called micro integrations, and it's just plugins um, that you can attach to the payment process. So right now we have a whole slew of those um, for a lot of components. So for example, if you want to Track um, uh, Google Analytics. Google Analytics has a um, an option that you can track e-commerce data, and this will um, attach the code to um, to a module so that the user sees it, and you can track the payment. We have stuff for um, for your component as well, so you can rewrite the whole um, <laughs> if you can rewrite the whole uh, user account. Um, you can, for example, apply document groups, you can send out emails or a lot of emails. Um, you can modify files, you can um, whatever else. Um, good example is Moses Tree as well. You can, um, with a small hack, you can configure Moses Tree so that you can um, control the number of listings that users can put up. So this is as an example. Um, virtual mod as well, you can automatically create a virtual mod user for the user as well. So use the account that you send up instant messengers, lots of stuff. Um, for now, I think we will go with a simple email. email. And just save that. So this is um, the idea behind it is that uh, with map integrations you have instances of functionality. So there's somewhere there's code sitting and you can attach certain data to it. So for the email MI we have um, a sender email, text and a subject. And when the payment comes in, this gets triggered. And at that point um, the MI gets loaded and it does what you want. So um, if you go back to the payment plan, one now. Um, you know the integrations here, and you can attach them to the payment plan. So you have a lot of flexibility um, as to what you want to attach to your payment plans. If you want to have different emails for different plans, you just create another instance and attach that to a different plan. Um, and the next thing is um, because it can get a little bit tiresome to do this for every single plan itself, we also have groups for payment plans, so for example, uh, this is just a root group, and you can attach micro integrations to groups as well, and then we we'll get applied to all the plans that are in this one group. Um, that, I think that covers about the basics. Um, the, um, once the payments come in, we have some stuff to help you track the payments, so we have, um, Center page. 
Um, you have a history and an event log. The event log um, tells you about errors and so forth, and um, also tells you when notifications come, have come in. So of course, for PayPal, if you pay, if the user pays via PayPal, then um, they will get to the PayPal server and get back, and then AEC will get an, an instant notification from PayPal. And uh, this is what will show up in the history. Not right now, of course, because we don't have any. But um, they can track when stuff is coming. Um, Um, what we do have is an overview of invoices, so that you can track that and you've all the creation data, transaction data, and so forth. Um, boring stuff. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. Um, next thing is if you want to change the um, sign up, we have a lot of options. For example, if you want to give out coupons, um, discount coupons. You can just create one of these here um, and give the coupon code to your users. Um, here as well, you have a lot of restrictions that you can apply. Um, right now, you can, for example, restrict how many times can be used, how many times the user can use it, and you can also do the same thing as for the payment plans, where you set um, which user group can use it, which um, which plan group user, whatever that means, um, can use it. And once you have that, um, you can just hand it out to your users. Oh, that's not going name. Um, and they can just apply it on the checkout page or on the confirmation page if they want to. Um, I think I will go ahead and install the very latest version because there are a couple of new things in there. Um, maybe you can hit me with some questions right now. I'm not too sure. You mean how easy it is to um, get integration going for your own component? Yeah. Um, I can, if you want to show you um, what integration looks like, for example. Um, yes, uh, that's yeah. a component for uh, mm -hmm. the boards. Yeah. Um, so, for example, if we go to a simple, I'll just show you the email. Um, <laughs> oh, that's um, Can I get rid of this one here? Yeah. Oh, it's cool down there. I just go to the view and just hide the computer. Hide the fire browser at the top. At the top? Yeah, hi, browser, tools, ah, yeah. Right. thanks. Um, integration are just classes where you set settings, mm -hmm. and then you have different functions. For example, we in this one we have settings for the sender name, the subject, and so forth. So it's just basic array, which um, with uh, types of, of data that you can get into, like lists and whatever. And then you have a uh, relay that gets called, for example, on the activation or the expiration. Yeah. And um, there's a certain state that gets transmitted, so you have the, um, the settings that always get over. And um, it's basically just a class that gets called when the pen comes in. So that you can put in whatever you want there. We also, for example, have a um, very simple integration for uh, MySQL, which is just um, carries out a query. So all it does in here is, you see here, there's a setting that is called query. And when it gets to the activation part, it just calls up this string and puts it in the database. So yeah. that was that's quite simple. That's easy enough. Um, it's similar for the payment processors. If I can just go into that real quickly, um, show you a simple one. Let's um, go for PayPal again. So here again, you just have the settings, um, some information so that it gets um, displayed nicely. Um, and then you have different functions that create the form for the checkout. So you just basically give it an array of um, of parameters that you want to transmit to the processor. And then there's a function that get called when the um, payment notification comes in, and um, you can do some verification. So this is uh, this is too complicated actually because it does a lot of verification with paper server. But um, the idea is that you, if you get data back, you can tell AC. 
this just came in, this amount, this currency, and you can check the invoice number that everything went all right. And that's all you have to do for payment processing, for, for basic one Mac, where you have an HTML checkout. Um, Um, install the latest version. Um, with the latest version, we have a couple of new features. Um, for instance, um, we now finally let you just update the component instead of uh, completely removing it first. So this is uh, a bit simpler. Uh, so 0.14. Let's install it very quickly. Uh, Next page. Ah, no no wait. Um, boy, he, all right. And it's also called non-members now. Previously, it was called manual, and everybody would think it's something else. But now it's the list for people who are not subscribed yet. This is on the side for anybody who cares. Um, we have a couple of new Mac integrations, and the biggest one and the most interesting one. So this is even worse development version. This is mm -hmm. where we get even more noises right now. <laughs> finished this week. Um, the tax helper, a tax helper function, which lets you um, basically add VAT information to your checkout. So we can request a VAT number. We can, um, for example, show a list of countries. You can get the text back. I will just explain the points of later on. Just for now, add some stuff to here. Um, uh -huh, it's already included. And you can also do um, text number validation. So it checks back with the European server for that kind of stuff. Um, I will just put it into the um, food group right now. So I have it there. Um, so if we log in with our trusted test user again, now that he has a membership, um, should now be able to get in. No. Oh, I will just get quickly get in the mm -hmm, menu item for the user account. X. That is my subscription. This is the page where users see. Um, so right now he has a trial, so he sees that he has seven days left in the trial, and then we'll just uh, move on to the next one. They also get an invoice management where they can also print out the. <laughs> God, <laughs> that's bad. I'm sorry for that. Um, you can go and turn on the display. Ah, that's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> I should have done it right away, right? <laughs> no, there are no errors in this software. Nothing <laughs> to be programmed, no notices at all. And the errors are. <laughs> One, okay. Um, they will get this. <laughs> <laughs> hmm? I think there's one more. No, no, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> um, what you have right here is the printout, so they can print out the invoice. This is um, also, the, it doesn't get shown in the printout, but they can put in their address here, which still also gets um, stored and we iterate it later on when you want to print different stuff. It puts in the date, and version number, and so forth. And it will also do the same thing that you saw in the checkout, so show them what they bought. There's also a shopping cart functionality integrated, so it would show different uh, multiple items, but I won't go into that right now. Um, and shows the payment date and so forth. But right now we have logged in, and we want to get a different membership. For example, a super membership. <laughs> So what we have here now is the location chooser for the Germany. Why doesn't it show the field? Sick. I still show the errors. Yeah. Um, 
shit's over there. Let's put two more in here. Um, yeah, you can also add custom locations here. For example, if you want to also accept international customers, then you can um, ooh, you put it US. States, they have 0% tax, just doesn't matter. Tax, nothing. Um, no shit, this good stuff. Information, concept. Doesn't do it. Yeah, this is good. Continue. Right. Um, so what it will do here is that um, it will add the text onto it if you choose so. It will also request the VAT number. So if you have an European tax number, they can accept it. You can check on it. And if the number is legit, then um, it will take the tax off if you want to. So if you have business customers, um, then the VAT gets transferred. So that it's um, from one business to another. This is an example for what you can do with the checkout. Um, there's also other instances. For instance, the um, I told you about earlier that you can attach um, a custom form to it, for example, which works pretty much the same as um, the text stuff that I put in there right now. Um, custom user details. In this one, you can create a number of settings, and it's a very, very crude way of. Um, it's horrible. Sorry for that. Um, you can put different um, user fields on a confirmation page if you want to accept some data there as well. Um, that's that. I think. You know, all the bases covered. Can anybody help me out with a question while I'm trying to figure out what to talk about next, or...? Come on. I'm already in 47 minutes. I thought this would take like 10 minutes or something. More complicated than I thought. It's, uh, is GPL free? Or? Yes. No, the, it's commercial GPL, so you, you have to pay for the registration. You get three months of access and updates and so forth. Yep, but you can modify it, you can redistribute it if you want to, uh, use it for your customers. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. If you don't have a question, we'll just continue with more boring stuff. And go into the export functions and the read out <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> and still have 12 minutes to fill, so it can get boring. Um, <laughs> but I was hoping for questions, but if there are then that's bad. What are your future plans? The future plans, yes, I have many future plans. Um, no, um, this is probably the last version that I will put out for um, in this kind of form, because I have to break it up. There's the whole component service is pretty monolithic, so there's an 18,000 lines class file in the middle of it, mm -hmm. which is bad, but um, I have to break that up, um, switch to the NIPU framework, and um, probably break it down to two or three components. For example, the, um, all the action stuff that you saw there, where you can attach actions to the payment plan, it doesn't make sense to allow to attach actions to other stuff. So for example, if you have um, plugin events in your Joomla system, the idea is that well, for the future plans, the idea would be to um, make that more flexible so you can put it somewhere else as well. Um, the other point is that right now you have a very fixed um, fixed uh, limited amount of stuff that you can use. You can all, only create payment plans. There is some, um, some flexibility with how you can get your users to the plans. So for example, if you have a server membership here, you can get a direct link to it. So you could, for example, build your own website, or uh, your own HTML page, or your own article, and just put the link in there. When they click the link, they get to the checkout. And um, this, um, you are not bound to the custom sign-up page. Um, and the idea for the future would be to um, not be restricted to subscriptions themselves, but to keep it a little bit more flexible. Um, 
And apart from that, there will be some changes to the website. Right now we have um, we have an access membership and we have support membership, so you can find tickets and so forth, and get us to do the stuff for you, the setup and so forth. But in the future, we'll probably um, separate the two and um, just sell support hours. Um, not a boring change. Um, this is about it, but future plans. Is it possible to send an email for a um, subscription plan next week? Mm -hmm. There is um, in the email in MI itself. There is a function that you can set the number of dates, uh, days before it gets sent out. There's also the um, more complicated multi-email integration, which lets you basically set any date you want. And um, there is um, this is a little bit more complicated. I can show you with the kind of text. I think there is a very complicated syntax for. Um, for rewriting stuff, so you have variables. There's some more easy stuff down No, I think it's in the settings. Um, the idea is that you can um, customize. There's a wiki syntax to um, put in fields. For example, in the invoice, you can you have variables that you can put in the text and get replaced with the user information. Same thing for the invoice, invoicing stuff and the payment plan, the name and so forth if you want to add it to the invoice. You can do the same thing with page customization. So if you want to have custom text or custom text for the user in the sign-up process, you can do that as well in the, in the settings. And then there is the um, more complicated JSON version of it. So this, for example, is the text string that produces um, the invoice number. You can customize your invoice number, so if you don't want to have this string of text, you can also um, tell it to have a running number with like eight numbers long and it's leading zeros and so forth. This is what you can do in the invoice number, or you want to do the year of the invoice minus number, whatever you want. And this is what JSON is used for. I didn't know where I started with this one. Um, and we are asking about the multi email. For example, you can um, put in custom data, it, it gets rewritten for the user itself. So you, get, you can pretty much set any data you want related to the user expiration or the account itself. Yeah. Eight minutes. Thank you. Good. <laughs> <laughs>